All right, y'all. So I'm gonna try to be quick with this. Um, this is just my opinion on the situation about podcasters and wrestlers and all this type of stuff. Um, for starters, I've said before, and it, it needs to be said at the top of this video, Twitter is the fucking devil. But Twitter is also the, the great equalizer. And it gives you a, the opportunity to interact with people who you normally would never interact with and, you know, see the thoughts and opinions of people who you would not have known existed. Um, but this is also that's part of the problem. Another part of the problem is this pandemic has a lot of people sitting at home doing nothing. And when they're sitting at home doing nothing, they're just tro trolling Twitter all day. So this gives people more time to vanity search their name. Um, they're interacting with fans more and our fans are, you know, snitch tagging people and all this type of stuff. Basically, we're going to get into the subject of podcasters and wrestlers getting into it on Twitter, which should not happen because wrestlers should be smart enough to not get involved. But also this needs to be understood. If you're a podcaster and you spend hours and hours and hours dogging wrestlers on Twitter and talking bad about them, don't be upset when somebody throws a shot back because you've probably spent months talking about this person who didn't know that you existed, who didn't care, or they probably did know that you exist, but they didn't care and they ignored you. And then when they finally say something back, you want to fold up in the fetal position and act like a victim. Fuck you. Fuck you. No, you've been doing this shit for months and months and months. You need to, you should be expecting at some point for somebody to say something back to you. Like the idea that people have grown huge channels, by the way, you know, uh, talking shit about people, making uh, all kind of off color comments about individuals, whether they be funny or not. Like I'm all, a part of, I'm all about whether something is funny or not. It's all entertainment as far as I'm concerned. So if you say something that I don't necessarily agree with, but I think it's funny, like Jim Cornette, then I'll laugh. But if somebody comes along and says, like, hey, this hurt my feelings, fuck you, Jim Cornette. Then I'm, and, and if, or if they crack a joke at Jim Cornette, I may laugh at that, too. You know, because ultimately, I don't know either one of these motherfuckers. And people who throw their opinions out there, they're in the ring now. Like, it's one thing if you're not in the ring. You know, if you're not involved in any of this stuff and somebody picks on you out of nowhere, sure. But if you're in the ring, you know, acting like you're the champion, you're, you're, you're going to, we're going to talk about this show and how terrible this person is and all this type of stuff. Be prepared for them to maybe one day get tired of that shit and respond. Look, ultimately, people are I, I hate to say this because it's, it's but it's true. People are not robots, dog. You know, they stop. They don't. They, somebody somebody tweeted that uh, uh, just because people become famous don't mean they stop being human. That's so disgusting. That's so soft. But it's true. You know, famous people are, you know, they, they deal with seeing themselves be attacked and being lambasted and stuff like that. They, they deal with it. But occasionally they get tired of it and they're going to respond. And, but you have to understand also that it's, it's true of every industry. You know, if you if you were a, a, not a wrestling podcaster, but where uh, an ESPN or a Fox News commentator and you say something about somebody, they're going to respond or they're going to ignore it. But ultimately, if you say something that's bad enough or that's, you know, hurtful enough, they're going to respond. You don't then get to play the victim and say, I'm just a wrestling journalist. That's not fair of you to talk about me like that. No, it's like you've been doing this shit all the time. Like all of a sudden you guys turn into Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam 95 where you start flopping all over the place just because somebody made fun of you. Like you make fun of them all the fucking time, but they have a bigger platform. So fucking what? So fucking, you should have considered that when you were talking about them, but you didn't, you didn't think about that until they decided to respond and make fun of you. Right. But ultimately that's the thing about Twitter is that it's the great leveler. You can get your cheap shots in. This is an opportunity. If you know, uh, a certain female wrestler, I said her name in a previous incarnation of this video, which is why I ended up having to record, re-record it. But a certain female wrestler, uh, Maybe who is not doing anything because there's not much to do. Everything's locked down. It's probably Vanity searched her name or was snitch tagged by some fan on Twitter that she interacts. Because she actually, if you, if a wrestler interacts with fans, then they bound to have also seen the haters. Don't think that just because, you know, and these, a lot of these female wrestlers, of course, have fan accounts. So, and they have may, maybe even have official fan accounts who those people interact with them regularly. So be, be conscious of that, you know? <laughs> so, but if you spend all your time 
uh, talking about this particular wrestler or these particular wrestlers, usually WWE superstars, mostly, you know, be be cons- be uh, be understood that they see it. You know, even if they don't respond, they probably see it. And then eventually they're going to lose their fucking mind. I have one of my um, one of my pet peeves is about the way people treat waiters, um, delivery people, people who are in the service industry. You know, somebody who is forced to smile when they see you and, you know, be nice to you and stuff like that for you to take their kindness for weakness. And I extend that to some degree to people on Twitter. Like there are a lot of people who see that you have said foul shit about them. And they still continue to, you know, interact with you or they or they, maybe sometimes they'll block you. But sometimes they'll continue to interact with you. Sometimes they won't block you. They just pretend that they didn't see it or they'll ignore it or whatever the case may be. But eventually there's going to become a point where you, you can't just keep ignoring it. You know, it's like it becomes a, a massive because, you know, as your followership grows, then the criticism grows along with the followership because then your followers have followers and, you know, and stuff like that. It's like the Meltzer syndrome, right? Like uh, uh, for a while, then for a while in, in, in the past, it was just basically Meltzer and Keller and those kinds of people. And then all of the other folks, you know, they would write letters to Meltzer. They would write letters to Keller. They wouldn't, you know, be able to say shit directly to a wrestler, but now they can say shit directly to wrestlers. They can go make videos about them. They can just go on and on and on about them and then continue to, you know, rapidly grow like fucking bed bugs and, you know, sucking the blood off of these, you know, wrestlers or whatever. And they eventually they get tired of it. You know, eventually they get tired of it. And I'm sorry that that upsets you, but you need to be able to take as good as you give. If you threw a thousand punches and then you get hit with one back, don't flop like Vladi Divac. Stop it. You know, you earn that punch. You know, and there are, you know, I've seen it happen at least once a week, you know, where a uh, wrestler X, you know, even whether it's an AEW guy or a WWE guy, you know, wrestler X vanity searches his name or gets snitch tagged by some fan or whatever the case may be. And some wrestling podcaster or some wrestling journalist or whatever ends up getting rolled or a wrestling fan with, with like 50 followers says something trying to trying to be like his favorite podcaster or whatever gets rolled on Twitter because he running his mouth and you know, like, and you're supposed to be what uh, some endangered species. Like, no, if you throw a punch, expect a punch back. Like, yes, Mike Tyson is a famous professional boxer, a world heavyweight champion. Mike Tyson is under no obligation to take slaps in the face from me because his punches are stronger than mine. Because he has more followers than me. I can just smack Mike Tyson across the face all day. No, I can't. Eventually, I, he may let me get away with one or two. I may be able to be like, ha ha, smack, ha ha, smack. But eventually, he's going to throw a right hook and knock my, my, knock my ass out. Okay? Eventually. And sometimes, I might not even get away with one. <laughs> all right? But that's just how it is. I don't view myself as being a weaker, a, a person in a weaker predicament. Yes, if you know, if you get enough people, you know, firebombing your Twitter account or firebombing your YouTube account or whatever, you could lose everything. I understand that. But at the same time, you should think about that before you run your fucking mouth. Okay? Think about, oh yeah, if I come across this particular fan account who sees or finds my stuff and then they start spreading it around to all of their friends and then they could come and firebomb my account. You should have thought about that before you ran your fucking mouth. Don't play the victim now. Okay. Don't play the victim just because the wrestler or the wrestler's fans are now on full defense mode. When you were in full attack mode, they didn't ask for that shit. They didn't ask for your opinion. You offered your opinion. You stepped into the ring Be ready for somebody to throw a punch back. And I get so tired of seeing this shit. I keep seeing all. And, you know, when uh, when uh, I think it was I forget who criticized um, Stephen A. Smith recently. No, it was the MMA media. It was MMA fighters and MMA media who um, criticized Stephen A. Smith when he said that Cowboy Cerrone was not interested in fighting in the in the fight against uh, Conor McGregor. He didn't he didn't think that, you know, Cowboy Cerrone was interested in that fight or he wasn't mentally involved with it or he wasn't on that level. It was something to that effect. 
And then Joe Rogan, who has a massive, massive following, criticized Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith held his fucking ground. He didn't just say, Joe Rogan, all your 100 million followers attacked me. I'm just a humble ESPN sports reporter. He didn't do that. He just stood his ground and said, I said what I fucking said. Now what? And then later on, it became he became kind of vindicated when out of nowhere, independent of Stephen A. Smith, Donald Cerrone came out and said, yeah, you know, I wasn't I wasn't in there. I wasn't really ready or whatever. And Stephen A. Smith then came out and was like, now what? All you motherfuckers who was attacking me. Now what? You know, so but there's a lot of people who, who don't have that sort of integrity. If you are going to be a critic, you should also be ready to be criticized. That's the nature of the game. If you're going to fucking cry about it and complain about it and bitch about it because they have so many more followers and they're famous. Fuck you. Stop being it. Stop being a wimp. Especially since a lot of these people are men. Stop it. You should know better. You know, yes, it's wrong for them to make fun of you, but it's also wrong for you to make fun of them. OK, so if you're not going to play by that rule, then fuck off. And a lot of this stuff comes off the, the, the heels of Hana Kimura's suicide. I was going to make a video about that, but I don't know enough about her to do that. But <clears throat> a lot of people who, you know, are virtue signaling about her being dead or her committing suicide. are That's what started all this shit. It's, because this video is being recorded on uh, May 25th, which is uh, Memorial Day. And a lot of people are um, upset about Hana Kimura who committed suicide a couple of days ago or a couple of days prior to this video being recorded. But, um, yes, you are virtue signaling because you don't mean it. You go off and you say crazy shit about people all the time. And just because someone dies, doesn't mean you're going to change your modus operandi. You don't, you're not going to. Okay. So don't pretend that you are, and please don't hide behind the, well, pro wrestlers are playing characters. I'm criticizing the character. That's bullshit. Okay. Cause a lot of these attacks are personal. All right. A lot of this stuff is personal. Cause there's for some people, there really is no difference between the two. Okay. You may use their shoot name or you may use their work name. Sometimes you may even use those things, uh, back and back and forth. Cause I've seen um, podcasters do this stuff all the time. Um, Meltzer is known for using shoot names. And Meltzer gets a lot of criticism. That's one thing I'll say about Meltzer is he takes a lot of shit. Ryan Satin does too. And the, at the most, they'll block you. You know, sometimes they'll sick their crew on you and they'll talk shit about you and make a gossip circle and all that type of stuff. But for the most part, they'll block you. And that's, that's whack. But, you know, whatever. You know, be ready to take the criticism that you give. But ultimately, Twitter is an equalizer and it gives you the opportunity to interact with people that you did not know existed. You would not know exist 15, 20 years ago, but at the same time, it also gives you, like I said, it's the equalizer. You can throw all the bullshit you want out into the universe. Eventually somebody's going to throw something back and you need to be ready for it. And you need to be prepared for it. You need to plant your feet, clench your chin and you'll clench your jaw and take it, you know, whether it's from a WWE superstar or somebody on the independence or whatever, just be ready to take it. And then once you take that shot, be like, yeah, I got into a sparring match with so-and-so. Like, I didn't, I don't harp on all the wrestlers I get into arguments with. And I got into a, <laughs> quite a few of them. Specifically, I've gotten into some really long debates with David Starr. Okay? Really long, detailed debates about him being a fucking communist. Which, you know, whatever. OK, but I don't have a personal beef with him and he didn't block me. So at least there is some respect there because he's, he didn't he didn't spaz out. He didn't block me. He didn't sick his followers on me. They didn't follow me and get me taken down or whatever. So there's at least some respect there. And I can take that if he's going to chuck hurl insults or whatever. If I hurl insults, he's going to hurl insults. I don't have to take that, you know, but you have to understand just because you criticize somebody, you're not immune from criticism yourself and yes it's going to happen it's inevitable but um this is just a quick rant i'm not really thinking too much about this but i think people need to just realize that yes individuals are human they make mistakes they're also quite petty